the Taylor X trial was designed primarily to accomplish three things. The first was to integrate a modern molecular diagnostic test into the clinical decision-making process. The second uh, and, and key point was to try and identify what the best treatment was for patients who had a test result that was in the mid-range, where we weren't quite sure what the most appropriate treatment was for those patients. And the third very important objective of the trial was to confirm that patients who were predicted to have a low risk of recurrence based on the, on the test result actually did have a low risk of recurrence with endocrine therapy alone and could therefore be safely spared chemotherapy. It was particularly unique at the time when the trial was launched 10 years ago was that it integrated a new molecular diagnostic test into the decision-making process. That had never been done before. And we used that test to help stratify patients according uh, to the treatment that we thought was most appropriate for them. What we found was that for women who had um, one of the most common subtypes of breast cancer, who would normally be recommended chemotherapy in addition to hormone therapy, that if they had this test done, the recurrence score, and the result was low or favorable, they had an excellent outcome with endocrine therapy alone and could be spared the chemotherapy. I think one of the major take-home points from the trial for patients is that any patient who's considering chemotherapy, e either the patient's considering chemotherapy or their doctor's recommending chemotherapy, shouldn't make that decision without having the results of this, this test, this assay, because we know that if the recurrence score is low, that there's a, a very low risk of recurrence within five years with just hormone therapy alone, and, and that chemotherapy is unlikely to be beneficial because it tends to prevent early recurrences, not late recurrences. The key point is that the chemotherapy doesn't seem to reduce the risk of recurrence uh, beyond five years. The benefit from chemotherapy is seen within the first five years. So I think we can be, be very confident that these patients who have a low recurrence sc score can be safely spared chemotherapy. I think you really need to do this test to make the most informed decision about whether to use chemotherapy. Uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a must, it's a necessity if you're seriously considering chemotherapy. Developing uh, a, a new biomarker should be approached with the same rigor as developing a new drug. For the most part, biomarkers are not developed with the same level of rigor. You're really not confident in how the test performs until you prospectively evaluate it because then you're, you're evaluating not only the, the validity of the, of the test, um, the, the, the value of the test, the strength of the association, but you're also seeing how it performs in a real-world situation. And so prospectively doing a trial, as was done in this case with the Taylor X trial, provides the highest level of evidence that supports the clinical utility of a new biomarker. Clinical utility means two things. Number one, does treatment change as a result of the test? And secondly, do patients benefit from that change? Uh, in this case, the, the treatment change is taking patients who would normally have been recommended to receive chemotherapy and saying, you don't need chemotherapy. Uh, and, and the benefit is that those patients are spared the side effects of chemotherapy.